some of the examples of uh, the tools that we're actually building for for startups or for enterprises, you know, in the space. So <clears throat> um, if you look at the top left corner where, you know, uh, we releases the token SDK developer toolkit. So we understand that as the enterprise blockchain space are maturing, a lot of our startups uh, who were previously building on Ethereum or maybe Hyperledger Fabric uh, during POC, they are looking at porting those applications over into a live uh, setting or production setting with their enterprise customers. So some of the most uh, required feature that they have actually asked us is that would Koda be able to support uh, tokens, right? Because some of these enterprise customers, they are looking at creating their own tokens uh, with for mm -hmm. enterprise use cases. So Koda is a very good platform, but before that, we don't support any tokens, right? So which is why we introduced mm -hmm. uh, token SDK um, one and a half years ago, where any developers can actually uh, tokenize asset or issue tokens on the, to on, on the Koda platform easily. So some of the uh, best use cases are enterprises looking at how can, how can they use Coda to create loyalty tokens that can be shared and be given to their end user and consumer within a certain conglomerate. You know, they want to retain or they want to grow their uh, consumer loyalty program. So they use Coda and the token SDK to do that. And then when it comes to tokenizing asset, you know, you'll be talking about, okay, maybe what about delivery versus payments you know wh where is the payments channel so very glad to also share that you know we also launched a coda settler which is um, a, an application that you can use together with coda to facilitate payment uh, for on ledger transactions with off ledger payments so we've made uh, partnerships with uh, swift the international banking messaging platform as well as MasterCard, um, you know, where startups, enterprises, they can use this facility to facilitate payments uh, off ledger. <clears throat> and one of the um, top news that actually came out of the R3 space uh, last week is that uh, NASDAQ in the US, they just announced that they will be using Coda uh, to create a full suite platform of issuing, uh, transacting, um, settling, as well as uh, token custodian uh, for digital assets. So this is actually a big win for R3 because if you look at NASDAQ, their technology is pretty much used by more than 120 different global uh, custodies as well as exchanges you know, around the world. So this has actually given um, us a very long uh, runway to help startups and to create more enterprise use cases in the digital asset space. <clears throat> So um, very briefly, I'd like to share with everyone, you know, some of the projects that uh, we are working on and, you know, who are some of these uh, house, household uh, corporations that, you know, we've been uh, collaborating with uh, over the past few years. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Tomasi is actually one of our investor, very early investor, um, you know, the likes of HSBC, um, Standard Charter, uh, ING, you know, they've uh, taken part in a lot of our trade finance uh, projects. Um, you know, working with different offices uh, globally. Uh, we partner up with MasterCard as well as Swift on the payments uh, integration side, allowing any uh, customers who is actually interested to explore on Coda, uh, have the means of uh, facilitating payments via traditional uh, rails. Um, somewhere closer to home as well, you know, we are also working with a lot of our conglomerates, uh, the likes of PTT Group, um, uh, ExxonMobil, as well as uh, Siam Cement Group in Thailand. So Jason, uh, let me pause there for a bit to see if there's any questions I can help with. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uh, the, there are <clears throat> questions, okay, about, um, well, there's one question, okay, are there any banks in Africa using Corda? I think this one is a very specific uh, question. Just a quick short one. Are there any banks, Afri do you know? You mean Africa? They are here, Africa? Yeah, any, yeah, any particip uh, participating banks uh, who are running any kind of pilot? Uh, we do have um, conversations Africa, do you know? with, with, with different financial institutions uh, globally, but you know, uh, most of my activities centered around APAC, 
but if you want to be specific, mm -hmm. uh, I can find more information. You feel free to ask the audience to reach out to me. Uh, I have, you know, email address. Uh, after this, I can share my email address. Uh, I can actually come back to you on that question because that is actually very specific. Off the top of my head, I don't think we have any projects coming out of uh, the African continent <clears throat> lately. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see um, you covering Cord App yet, but a question came up about Cord App. So the, uh, I think it comes from Tan. He, he mm. asked, okay, is Cord App available for Android or or iOS mobile device. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I think there's some confusion here. Cord app is yeah. not an app, right? No, Cord app, app is not, not an app. app. Cord app is so. Uh, uh, so any applications that's built on Coda, we refer them to Cord apps, right? Stands for Coda applications in yes, short. Yes, that's right. Yes. Mm. So I have a slide coming up where I can show you what are the Cord apps that we have in our, our space. Uh, but at this moment, you know, just for the audience benefit, uh, all our applications are focusing mm -hmm. on in the B2B enterprise space. We don't have any B2C use cases because uh, we are a enterprise blockchain platform that operates on the B2B space. <clears throat> okay, I shall I move on? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, there's a question, okay, that comes, okay. There's one question, okay, that comes. I don't know whether is it appropriate to answer now, but maybe you you comment, uh, right? Okay. So one question is that uh, Bill Gates giving away company stock to employees. Okay, is this uh, what you can do with these tokens? Um, is 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 this something uh, okay that? Uh, okay. But okay, that's. Is this I, I can try to. Sorry, I can okay try that, to. Sorry, go ahead, Jason. Do you understand the question? Yes, Maybe I do. Can I, yes, again. I do. Maybe I do. Can... I do. So I will try to understand to the best of my ability mm. and my understanding. Mm. Um, when you're talking about employee stock options, right? Mm. Um, you need to go through the current um, settings, the current regulations, right? You need to, you know, uh, get in touch with the SEC. You need to come up with a proper employee stock options plan. Then you need to, you know, come up with contracts and to 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 state out how many stocks are actually given to employees. Uh, when we are talking about tokenized asset at this stage, uh, we have not reached that level yet where you know you can easily uh, tokenize something and then you give to your employee and claim that 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 token will be valued at X number, right? So it, it is a, it's a very different scenario. Um, at this stage. Our use cases has been, you know, tokenizing uh, loyalty points, you know, because you, as a consumer, you you have a lot of points that you rack up maybe with your rights or with your your shopping, you know, uh, history. Maybe those points that you rack up, a lot of the enterprises are using, uh, you know, the blockchain as an opportunity. Look at how can they turn them into loyalty points that can be traced uh, on the blockchain, you know, and so that they can actually better grow the relationship between the business and their customers. So th that is the current use case. I have one question. Okay, the question is about the uh, the recent uh, use case that you talk about the Bank of Thailand Central Bank Digital Currency being a sure. landmark case because you are able to uh, make cross-border payments, okay, uh, using a tokenized Thai bar. Uh, yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit about why is this uh, what is the big change here? Why why sure. is this a, a landmark okay, uh, sure. use case? Happy to do that, Jason. So um, the central bank usually act as the party. Let's say whenever the commercial banks, they want to transact with each other, um, they will mm -hmm. have to go through the central bank, right? We call that ACH, Auto Clearing House. Yeah. And that transaction is actually very costly. So if you send through a payment, say, early in the morning, because that's when everyone wants to get a transaction done, the cost is very high. Mm -hmm. If you try to want to be cheaper, then your transaction need to like maybe wait until end of the day, you know, and, 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 and in the process of doing so, you are adding a lot of uh, pressure to the infrastructure of the central bank as well, of their ACH. So by using mm -hmm. um, blockchain to actually tokenize that fiat currency into, you know, uh, tokenized Thai baht, 
then the central banks are able to assign those tokens uh, to all the commercial banks where the commercial banks can directly transact the token with each other without the need of mm. going through the central bank, the existing rails. So that is actually very um, innovative because you are taking away a lot of uh, pressure points from your existing infrastructure and you allow the commercial banks to transact with each other uh, anytime they, they wish to. So it's a very powerful uh, mechanism. And the central bank is also very happy because all these tokenized high but they are packed to the fiat currency. So there's no fluctuations, there's no uncertainty. The central bank will have you know a, a, a full view of all the transactions and it's a very innovative use case. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay shall so, i okay. all right let's continue right. sure so uh one of the audience just now mentioned you know about code apps so any applications that's actually built on coda they are referred to as uh, code apps so um you know we have a lot of code apps that's actually running currently um different applications built for different enterprise uh, purposes uh in, in our space and uh, all these different uh, applications, you know, of course, they are interacting and interoperating with each other uh, on the Coda network as well. So uh, we have a few verticals that's actually very mature. Uh, you know, they are in, in the supply chain area, uh, trade finance area, as well as uh, insurance uh, and some KYC space as well. So um, the applications uh, that is actually built on Coda are expanding, uh, you know, day by day. And uh, we have, you know, on, on, on another hand, we have a lot of enterprise customers who is actually constantly coming to, you know, uh, to us to find out what are the latest uh, use cases or latest uh, applications, um, you know, that can, uh, they can potentially explore and consume uh, that's actually running on, on Coda. Mm 